Hey guys, it's StormGrayer88 again. Today's video will be going over the two and a half centuries of the Kasuku period and the Sanzan era. So let's get started by picking up where we left off. 1187, King Shunten had taken the throne and established his rule at Urasoi Castle in central Okinawa. His rule saw the end of the transition from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to an agrarian society. The building of most of the Ryukyuan castles called Kasuku and the practical emergence of the feudal lords called Aji. While the official records claim he ruled over Okinawa, it's much more likely that he only controlled Urasoi and the surrounding areas and merely held influence over some of the neighboring Aji. Now the Gasuku period covers three dynasties, starting with Shuntens. Once Shunten died, he was buried in the Urasoi Yodori mausoleum and his son, Shunba Junki, ascended the throne. The biggest changes during his reign was the introduction of the Kana writing system from Buddhist monks from Japan and the initial construction of Shuri Castle. After Shunba Junki was his son, King Gihon, whose reign was full of typhoons, famine, and plagues. He took these disasters personally and believed they happened because he wasn't a good enough king. So supposedly, he relinquished the throne to his prime minister, Aso, and disappeared into the jungle of northern Okinawa, last being seen near the cliffs at Hado Point. Aso founded his own dynasty, claiming to be descended from the original Tenson dynasty, and saw the conclusion of the natural disasters that occurred during Gihon's reign. He also began influencing feudal lords and communities throughout the Ryukyu Islands, especially Kume and Amami. However, in 1272, envoys from the Mongol Empire under Kublai Khan visited Okinawa and asked that the Ryukyuans help with the invasion of Japan. Aso refused, and in 1276 the Mongols returned and were forcibly driven off the island at the cost of many Okinawans being captured and taken to China. Nothing of note happened during his son Taisei's rule, and the same for his son Eiji. The rapid succession and short reigns of these two kings caused a major challenge for the young king Tamakasuku. According to the official records, the Aji who had previously been loyal to the ruler of Urasoi had no respect for him due to the fact that he was only 19 years old at the time. The Aji of Ozato then proclaimed his own kingdom in the south, called Nanzan, or Southern Mountain. Likewise, the Aji of Nakijin proclaimed the kingdom of Hokuzan, or Northern Mountain. This left Tamagasuku with what would then be known as Chuzan, or the Central Mountain. The three mountains of Ryukyu would remain rivals for over a hundred years. King Sei would take the throne at the age of ten and his rule was dominated by his mother, who ruined his popular reputation with her corruption and interference. When he died in 1349, the governor of Urasoi, Sato, seized the throne for himself. King Sato proved to hold great diplomatic skill as he moved to establish relations with the newly founded Ming Dynasty in China. He submitted to the Ming Emperor and in return was recognized as King of Chuza and allowed to conduct trade with China. China gave a fleet of ships to Chuzan, which Sato used to build a trade network from Japan to Siam and from Korea to Java. He also saw the settling of 36 Chinese families in Kume village near the port of Naha. Sato died of a snake bite in 1395 and was succeeded by his son Bune. He sent a mission to China asking for his investiture as king, but got no response until 1406. In the meantime, a regular tribute mission ended badly when the Ryukyuans had castrated a group of young boys and sent them to the Ming court to serve as eunuchs. The Ming emperor was horrified and sent the boys back to Ryukyu with the demand that eunuchs never be sent as tribute ever again. Now down in Nanzan, a man named Hashi captured Ozato Castle in 1402. This situation will set the stage for the end of the Sanzan era in the next video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more, and as always, see you next time.